In this video, we're going to look at Hoffa's fat pad impingement or infrapatellar fat pad impingement. Now, all that means is you've got a fat pad behind the tendon at the front of your knee, your patella tendon, and that can sometimes get pinched and cause a lot of pain over the front of the knee. So we'll look at why that happens and how it happens, then how to diagnose it, because it's quite easily confused with other types of knee pain. And then finally, we'll look at 12 different treatment options, which often you mix to achieve full recovery. And that will include some exercises as well. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment of your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to link to our website. Now, Hoffa's fat pad lies right at the front of the knee below the kneecap and just behind the patella tendon. So the patella tendon is the tendon that runs from your point of your kneecap to your shin bone. And it's part of the complex of your quad complex. So if you contract your quad muscles, your front thigh muscles, you also pull on the patella tendon and that then can compress the, um, the fat pad. The fat pad also crosses over the line, the joint line of the main knee joint, so where the femur bone and the um, shin bone comes together. Now, inter interestingly, the fat pad, it's obvious that the fat pad is there to provide a bit of cushion for the tendon, but it also helps with a bit of shock absorption and helps to get the loads more evenly through the knee joint. But the interesting bit is that it also has loads of nerve endings. Now, we tend to think of fat as something that is kind of redundant, why do we have fat? But in this case, the fat pad seems to have an important role that it's those nerve endings sends messages to your brain about where your knee is and how your knee is moving with regards to how it perceives pressure changes. Um, but it's also the reason why it can become so, so painful when it's injured because of all those nerve endings. Fat pad impingement is exactly what the name says. It's whenever the fat pad gets pinched either between the bones, the, the femur and your shin bone, or actually that the kneecap pinches it down onto the other bones. And we're not really sure why that happens exactly, because the fat pad is meant to slide freely, but sometimes it gets a bit stuck and then it gets pinched. And that can be either due to a lot of swelling or due to something holding on to it, so thickening or scar tissue or things in that area. Now, some of the things that researchers have identified so far is that if you get a direct knock, so either you fall onto your knee or somebody kicks you or hits you with a hockey stick or something like that, and that causes sudden swelling of the, of the fat pad, then of course it's more easy to pinch it, and then often it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle that the more you pinch it, the more it stays swollen and it just, it doesn't want to calm down. Then secondly, there's also some evidence that repetitive trauma, especially through hyperextending your knee, because if you're going to hyperextend your knee, you're going to pinch the fat pad more easily. And if you do that enough times, that can irritate it to the point where it becomes chronically um, thickened and swollen and uncomfortable. But there's also evidence, although this is in rats, that high levels of, of exercise where they make the poor rats run a lot on a treadmill, that that can cause fat pad swelling. Although we don't know if that's part of the reason in humans, because obviously our biomechanics is quite different. And then there's also some evidence that perhaps the shape of your kneecap can predispose you to this type of condition, that some people tend to get it more easily if they have a certain shape in their bones than others um, do. And then lastly, there's also some sort of a link between osteoarthritis and fat pad um, impingement. But again, we can see there's a link, but we're not quite sure what that link is. A primary diagnosis of fat pad impingement, which means that it's only fat pad impingement, is actually not that common. It's more common that it's there in combination with, a diff with another injury, like for instance, patella tendonitis, which is an overuse injury, which makes you think, okay, maybe overuse in sport can cause fat pad impingement as well. And also ACL injuries or meniscus tears, which again, with those type of injuries, you usually have a bit of trauma involved, which can mean that you get that pinching of the fat pad. And this is why it's also often called a syndrome rather than an injury, because it means that it's not just the fat pad, there are quite a few other things often that's also going on. Now, to diagnose it, your physio can usually diagnose you through just really listening carefully to how your pain started, where you are feeling your pain at the moment, so doing some tests, just prodding where you feel your pain and seeing what movements hurt and doesn't hurt. 
and also seeing what makes it feel better, what makes it feel worse. Now, in some cases, you may need to have a scan to get a definitive diagnosis, but in most cases, that's usually not needed. Typically, the pain from, from fat pad impingement is felt deep behind the patella tendon or to the sides of it. It can be like a burning pain or it can be a deep aching pain. And most of the time, there will be quite a lot of puffiness and swelling in that area as well. Now, the pain is mostly felt when you do activities where you straighten your knee fully. And this is important because that's a way to distinguish it from other types of anterior knee pain. So if your knee hurts most when you bend your knee, um, like for instance, the downwards movement of a squat, it's likely not going to be fat pad impingement. It's more likely going to be something like your patella, ten uh, patella tendon, so patella tendonitis or patella femoral pain syndrome or something like that. So when you feel your pain is quite important. So another thing that can bring the pain on is if you straighten your leg fully and you really tighten up your quad muscles. That movement can often cause that pain to feel worse as well. And your physio can use that movement to reproduce the pain as well, that they push your leg fully straight. So they'll push down on your knee gently and up on your heel to just get that straightened out. And that can often reproduce the pain because it, it tries to pinch um, the fat pad. Then standing for long periods of time can be uncomfortable. And the most common reason for that is that we tend to have bad habits where we just push our knees back into hyperextension. And instead of using your quad muscles to take the strain off your knees, you kind of hang off your knees by pushing them too far back into extension. And that's typical the position that the fat pad will pinch in. And that can be one of the causes as well for fat pad impingement if you have a habit of standing with your legs locked into full extension like that. And then lastly, it often also hurts when you walk around in flat shoes rather than shoes with a slight heel on them. And that's because the flatter the shoe is, the more your, your knee goes into full extension when you walk. Whereas if you have a slight heel on it, you don't tend to um, have your leg that extended. But also check if you've got a habit of kind of swaying your legs out in front of you, kind of flicking them out because that flicking action and plonking down with your heel can cause the knee to forcefully extend. And if your fat pad is, is painful, then that can cause it to, to pinch as well. Now, it's also possible that if you sit for with your knee bent quite strongly for a long period of time, that can make the fat pad hurt more. And the reason for that is your patella tendon pulls tight if you sit with your knees bent up and that will press more against your fat pad. Now, Normally that's not a problem, but when the fat pad is injured, it's a bit like pressing on a bruise. The more you sit with that pressure on it, the more tender and, and painful it will get. It's not a diagnostic tool in itself if um, to just say, oh, that, that's positive for me, so I definitely have this, because it also will hurt if your kneecap's injured or your patella tendon is injured. So you have to look at all the factors before you get to a diagnosis. I just want to stress again that it's important that your physio takes a really good history of what's going on with your knee and test for the other typical things that can cause pain over the front of the knee as well. Because remember I said the, the fat pad has lots of nerve endings. So what can happen in the body is say for instance, my thumb hurts and it hurts for long enough and it's really painful. It can sensitize the nerve endings lower down. So now the pain starts, I start feeling the pain in a bigger area than the actual injury. And that can happen for the knee as well. So often if the kneecap is quite painful or the patella tendon is painful, you can also feel pain in the fat pad, but without that being the main injury. So it's important to look for other things as well to either rule them in or rule them out. And remember, it's totally possible to have more than one injury at a time as well. Okay, so if we look at treatments, the thing to remember here is that we're all different. So you won't benefit from all of these treatments and you may find that some feels really uncomfortable while others work really, really well. You have to find that's what suits your body. And just because certain exercises work for somebody else doesn't mean they're right for you. So don't force things if they don't feel right. And if you're struggling with all of this, ask a physio, they'll be able to help you. The first treatment is quite simple. And this is because if you think of the mechanics of how the fat pad gets injured, it's very simple. It gets pinched. And the more it gets pinched, the more irritated it is. So we need to try and take that pinching away from it for a few weeks so that it can then heal. So look at the positions that hurt. It's sometimes as simple as really thinking about how are you standing during the day. So if you find that you are extending your legs fully, 
too far straight or it hurts to have them fully straight, just keep them slightly bent while you're standing. Or instead of standing for long periods of time, perch on a stool if that's possible. Then also, if you think of shoes and how you walk. So the first thing I've already touched on is flat shoes tend to cause more knee extension when you're walking and therefore can increase your pain more quickly. So if you've got a shoe with a bit of a heel on it, running shoes, regular running shoes work really well. That could help. But you can also consider putting some heel lift inserts temporarily into your shoes to lift your heel a little bit. I'll put some links in the description of this video if you want to see what I'm talking about. Um, because you can get them cheaply off of Amazon and you can just discard them one, once you're done with them. But then also it can help to shorten your stride because the further you stride ahead of you, the more we tend to place our heel down and that hyperextends the knee. So keeping your strides a bit slower, shorter, perhaps walking a bit slower even, can really make a difference for this. Some people find taping their knee can be quite useful. Now, the way that they apply the tape is thought to move the kneecap slightly out of the way. The, the fat pad just has a bit more space, so it stops that pinching and then it can calm down. Now, there isn't any research out there to say that taping definitely works. And in my clinical practice, I found that for some people it works, for others it doesn't make any difference. But it's something that's relatively cheap to try. So if you are having quite a lot of trouble, it's definitely something that I would give a go and see how it feels. But what you want to do is you want to check how much pain you have before you apply the tape. And so it's useful to have a movement or something or just take notes of what your pain feels like during the day. Then you apply the tape and you take notes after that. And if the tape reduces your pain by at least 50%, then it can be useful to continue. If the answer is no, it doesn't do that, then I wouldn't continue with it. Now, I'll put a link in the description of this video to a good video that shows you step by step how to apply the tape, but you will need somebody else to do it for you because it's difficult to, you've got to relax your quad or your thigh muscles fully, and you can't really do that if you're applying the tape on yourself. I'll also put links in the description of the types of tape you'll need for this because it's the rigid, the zinc oxide and the hyperfix tape that you want. But yeah, look at the description of this video for a detailed video on how to apply the tape to your knee for fat pad impingement. This is one of the few injuries that can actually benefit from regular icing during the early stages. And this is because excessive inflammation and swelling is part of the injury process. So if we can reduce the swelling, reduce the inflammation, you can get the fat pad to um, go back to its normal size more quickly and your pain will resolve more quickly. Now, this doesn't mean put the ice on and stay, have it on there for the whole day because that will have the opposite effect. I have made a detailed video explaining to you how often you want to ice injuries and how to do that. Um, so if you want to know more about that, have a look at that video. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Also, this means that anti-inflammatory medication may actually be useful in this case because it can reduce the inflammation and swelling. However, you do want to check with your doctor before you, can, before you take them. I know they are freely available over the counter, but they can have side effects. So it's always best to check with your doctor if there are any tablets that is okay for you and whether you should avoid some of them. And with anti-inflammatories, it's also one of those things where you want to take a short dose. So not more than 10 days usually. 10 days is the maximum. Usually it's better if you can take it for shorter periods of time, but your doctor will be the person to advise you on that. Some patients may have a kneecap that doesn't move as freely as the other side. And some therapists feel that if you mobilize that kneecap, so you do movements on it to get it to move more freely, that can help reduce the, the strain on the fat pad. However, we're not quite sure if that actually works because the studies where they have tested that, they've also combined it with other treatments that we've seen does work in the past. So it's not clear whether the manual therapy actually adds much in those cases. But again, it's something to try. It doesn't seem to have um, very negative effects. And the only, if you do have a massive flare up after you have a treatment of manual therapy, that's likely not something you want. So that's something to chat to with your therapist. But in most cases, an experienced therapist will know how to do it that you don't get a big flare up afterwards. An exercise that people often prescribe for this condition are quad or front thigh stretches. And the reason is that they reckon because the patella tendon is attached to the quad muscles, if the quad muscles are too tight, they can pull the patella tendon too tight and that can press on the fat pad. However, in my experience, if you do quad stretches too early on in the treatment, can you see that you're gonna, you're gonna be the person pulling that 
um, tendon even tighter over already irritated fat pad and it's going to make it more sensitive. So if you want to do stretches, please take note of how your pain feels before you do the stretches and normally throughout the day. Then usually the stretches feel okay while you do it, but it'll flare up several hours later. So do check in the 24 hours after how your knee reacts to make sure that they are okay to do. But a better option, especially during the early stages of recovery, can be massage, foam rolling, using a massage gun on your quads, not the fat pad because that will irritate it more with the percussions. Um, or even perhaps dry needling can help to relax the muscles. But I would definitely stay away from quad stretches during the early stages. Later on, once your fat pad irritation has um, disappeared, then you can start adding in stretches that gets the patella tendon into that position where it compresses the fat pad a bit more. If we look at strengthening exercises for fat pad impingement, often when somebody's knee is injured, the first thing they want to do is strengthen the quads. But with this condition, again, I want you to just delay strength training for the quad muscles with a little bit until the fat pad has calmed down a bit. Start with things like glute exercises and core exercises in positions that doesn't hurt your knee. So for instance, a clam exercise. I know it's a little bit boring, but it's something you can do to get your um, rotators of your hips stronger and teach yourself that movement pattern of getting your hips out that won't affect your knee because the better your control is there, the less your knee will turn and twist as you move and that can help your fat pad. Also, hamstring strength and control is actually very important here because if you think of how your knee straightens when you walk and run, it's the hamstrings that actually has to stop it from overextending. So good hamstring strength and control is important for fat band syndrome. And often you can start with things like bridge exercises already because it doesn't take the knee into that fully extended position. But you may have to play with how straight your legs is to find a comfortable position. I've made a whole video about different progressions for glute bridge exercise. I'll put a link to that one in the description of this one as well. Also, foot and ankle exercises to stop you over pronating. That can help with how your knee carries strain and how the fat pad moves when you move. And again, I've made a video for exercises to correct over pronation if that's part of your problem. And then lastly, we have to um, strengthen the quads, but possibly a best, the best exercise to start with are squats and isometric squats in small ranges of motion. So you don't want to do knee extension machines in the gym because if you're going to do that full extension motion, it's likely going to cause that pinching of the fat pad. Better exercises like a high wall sit where you're not too flexed with the knee, so the patella tendon isn't pressing too hard on the, on the fat pad, but you're also not um, too extended with the leg, so you're not getting that compression component when you fully extend. So you just keep that middle range position. And then later on, as the fat pad calms down, you can start working through range of motion with different types of squat exercises. But it's really best that your physio advises on those because there's no one size fits all with it and will depend on your current control and how irritated your fat pad is with this. Then something that flows into the exercises is retraining movement patterns. Now, not everybody will need this, but if your physio has pinpointed that actually you have a habit of when you walk, you hyperextend or flick your legs and that pinches the fat pad, that may be something that they will give you techniques and ways to unlearn those movement patterns. But it's really not everybody who needs it. In most cases, it's something else, just plain old overuse that, that um, affected the, the fat pad. So don't go changing your movement patterns if you don't need it. Now, sometimes if you overpronate, it's not something that you can actually correct with exercise. That's, this is excessive overpronation, by the way. So remember, it's normal when we run and walk to pronate, our foot, feet roll in and out um, as part of the normal gait cycle. But if that's excessive and your foot is of a foot shape that can't actually be corrected with exercise, then you may benefit from um, wearing orthotics, which is shaped for your foot to just reduce that excessive pronation. You can get off the shelf ones. I'll put links to that in the description of this video. But it's often best to actually see a podiatrist for this, especially if you have really flat feet, because in those cases, the off the shelf things don't really um, fit that well and they can be really, really uncomfortable. Corticosteroid injections used to be the first line of treatment nearly for fat pad impingement because it works so well with calming the pain down. However, 
this is now left as a last resort before we consider surgery. And the reason for this is that it can have unwanted side effects, one of which is that it can actually cause the fat pad to atrophy, which means it shrinks and it loses its shape and then it doesn't do its job anymore and it can cause chronic pain then. So a corticosteroid injection is something that I would only advise you try if you have really tried offloading the knee for a long period of time, you're sure you haven't been doing things that's actually aggravated it, checked your rehab exercise that they're the right things for you because often what we see is that people say, no, I've done physio, it's not helped. And then you look at the rehab they've been given and it's actually been the wrong things. The exercises have made it worse. So make sure that with everything you do, you monitor your pain. If you see there's an increase, significant increase in your pain in 24 hours after you've done something, it likely means that what you've done is not good for it at the moment and it needs to be adapted. So speak to your physio in that case. But if you've tried everything and you've done it right and your knee is just one of those unlucky ones that doesn't want to respond, then a corticosteroid injection is something to try. Then, of course, there is always surgery. If you have one of those annoying knees that just doesn't want to settle down, even though you're doing all the right things, and that happens, um, you can be doing everything you should be doing and the knee just decides to stay painful, then surgery is an option. And they will usually do key keyhole surgery and just go in and either loosen the scar tissue off that they think may be attaching to stuff, or they just go and take away the thickened areas so it no longer pinches. But they always try to keep as much of the fat pad intact because like we saw, it has a really important function in the knee. Brilliant, hope you found that useful. Now remember, if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.